Hello everybody, welcome back uh, to my little channel over here. This is a second video or an update video on this ESP32 S3 solar node experiment I'm trying to run and that basically means I'm trying to put a solar node together with a ESP32 S3 which is never recommended but I wanted to do this little experiment to see what happened. So um, as you can see, um, you know, if you see the first video, you'll see everything that I did, you know, the case and the airflow and all of that. But this is just the inside look on how it looks today inside this node. So um, to, uh, uh, um, uh, again, look, we have this uh, uh, seed WIO mastastic uh, node in here, the SX 1262 uh, mastastic node. Um, this thing's small. If you see the first video, it's the size of my thumbnail. So it's very small uh, node in there. So that's the first thing we have in this uh, uh, box. We have then uh, the INA219 over here. And that's just to measure the current and, and uh, you know, the battery and all of that. And I connected it via uh, I2C or I square, IC squared, whatever, uh, to, the, to the node. So we can see that. Then the third thing in here is, of course, this 18650, 3500 milliamp hour battery. So that's what drives the whole thing, the battery behind it. Um, and uh, then, of course, I have this charge controller, which I added. When I used uh, the node's charge controller, the seed uh, uh, um, mastastic node, it could only charge at about 100 milliamp hour where this charge controller can charge up to one amp. You'll see that I have a serial cable to the outside, okay, uh, not serial, a USB cable to the outside, uh, which I connected a, um, a little uh, solar panel to. And, um, you know, this, this charge controller can charge up to one amp. So if I plug it into my PC, I can see the INA reporting almost an amp worth of charging, which is great. Uh, the little panel I have on it can do about 200, 250, maybe, which which is which is okay. But that's uh, looking at it on the inside. So, um, but if you want to see more detail about this, go look at the first video. So, here's really the test that I then did. You know, um, uh, this is a day and another day and a night in the middle. So, um, you know, this uh, a reddish purple line. That's the voltage as measured by the INA219. And uh, the blue line is the, the current or the, the charge current that it's charging at. So we could see um, it was about at 4.7 volts and it dropped to about 4 volts here by 7 p.m. That's when it got dark. And we can see that it stayed quite a while on 4 volts, uh, then 399. Then it started dropping through the night until about... 7 o'clock the next morning, it was at, uh, you know, um, 2.81 volts. Um, and then we can see it start charging back up. Uh, the, the blue line, we can see it was charging. It's still in the positive, 81, 44, 13. But here by 6.30, you know, that's usually when, or 5.36, that's usually when, um, uh, uh, you know, shadow starts hitting the, 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 the solar panel and we can see that it drops and then during the night we can see this guy pulling like we've shown in the first video consistently pulling about a hundred milliamp hours which is a lot for a for a for a node a solar node you know that's a lot of power draw so you can actually see this line drop quite rapidly I think if you continue you'll very quickly be at um, the 2.5 volt cutoff so, um, but in any case, uh, when it did, the sun came up the next morning, it had survived, and you can see that the current, um, it starts charging it until about one o'clock, it got to where uh, what's known as absorption hit of a charging chip said, okay, that's it, I've charged it to 80% battery, I'm now going to, you know, uh, um, just charge the, large, the last 20%. Um, so that's when, uh, uh, you know, it started throttling. We can see that the 
uh, you know, the, the charged chip comes down in, in, in amps um, until about, you know, somewhere here 530. That's again when the, when the um, shadow hits it. So, but we can see that it charged it up to about 4.15 and that's where the shade, you know, goes over the panel and um, so not a bad test, but uh, you know, this drop off, the only thing I can say is this drop off is very severe uh, during the night. And, um, you know, and because it c consistently draws uh, 100 milliamp, that is, that is not good. So um, here's the node I, uh, uh, that I tested. Here's a little solar panel. That's the node itself with the antenna on top and a little solar panel for the fan. Again, that's in the first video. Someone suggested that I actually put a silver uh, tape on the outside, which I did. You buy that at Home Depot. It's like a thermal tape. I, I, I put that on a case, and that reflects a lot of uh, sunlight, so it doesn't get as hot. But in any case, there it was, I, uh, and it's just temporarily on this thing. Um, and that's what I tested. So, uh, you know, on the second day, I then wrapped just a towel around the, the, the solar panel to see how long it would last. You know, so the end result was um, that it, um, from full, fully charged, it ran for about 25 hours until it cut off. And uh, that was the end of that. Um, it, it cut and, and, um, uh, um, and um, I tried recovering from that. So, um, and I'll show you a little video of what I did to, after this this, uh, you know, where it went dead after 25 hours. Then let's have a look at a little video on what happened at that point. Okay, so I'm out here this morning with uh, my little solar node. This one and you, I like I, I've wrapped uh, the solar panel in a, um, you know, just a towel, just so that it doesn't charge. So like I, like I showed earlier, it lasted for about 25 hours. So um, if I now look inside my mobile app over here, and I don't know if you can see that. Oh, well, there's my, my mobile app. Um, and we can see that, um, that um, I'm connected currently to another node. And let me search here for VSS. And we can see that it saw it 10 hours ago or whatever. It's the last time that was... Uh, you know, last night. It's now the next morning. It's the last time it saw it. So it's, um, you know, and it, it's not active. If I try and trace route it, um, nothing's going to happen. It's not working. So um, I'll go in here and uh, try and connect to it via Bluetooth, and I'll also see that that will fail. So it doesn't connect. It's dead. And I can confirm that it's dead by you know, looking inside the node itself, we can see that, uh, you know, the LED is dead or whatever. Now, um, this is that um, new charge chip that I installed, which is, has a pretty neat, few neat features. Um, it has a cutoff at uh, 2.5 volt, which is what we saw, what I saw, you know, when it reached 2.5 volt, this chip cut the battery off from uh, you know from the mestastic node, so um, so that happened, um, which is great. Uh, previously, uh, there was no cutoff on this board, and it ran to about 1.8 volts, and then um, you know corrupted the board. So uh, so that's the first neat feature about this thing. And the second neat feature about this uh, charge chip is it won't start charging unless. Um, Unless, uh, 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 you know, there's a proper 5 volt coming from the, the, uh, the input source. So, and I think that is for, you know, if, it, if it's a little bit dainty when it has to recover and there's just a little bit of uh, voltage coming through, it's not actually going to start um, the chip. But we can see that. We're going to try and verify that now. So I'm actually going to, hang on a second... Let me see if I can get this. I'm actually going to try this now. 
I will uh, turn the and see if it will recover. So I'm going to take this off. There we go. And uh, we can see uh, the charge chip, the chip over there, turn red. So it's turning red, a little LED on there. And um, I'm actually going to turn it around and show it into the, you know, show the solar panel directly into the sun. And we can actually see the node is coming on. You know, when it was the other way around, there wasn't enough voltage. But now that there's a proper amount of voltage, I can see that um, the, the little chip came on. I could see a green light on the, the, um, the, the node. And I can see it flashing. So I'm going to assume that it's uh, back. I can see the little green light flashing over there and the charge light. So uh, let's actually have a look on the app again and see what we can see there. Okay. Let me just get that right. Yep, I'm going to try and connect to it. And let's see. Oh, there we go. It's connecting. And yeah, it seems to be alive. The region's still there. Let's go look at um, things like, um, um, let's go look at, yep, there's the other nodes. Let's go look at just quickly the radio configuration. You know, uh, things like uh, our position. Yep, uh, no. It seems like it lost its position. So again, it seems like it's corrupted a few things. Let's go look inside. Yeah, well, that's at least there. Um, yeah, so for some reason, and this happened last time as well when it ran out of power, it's like it corrupts things, like um, the OK to MQTT was turned on, and now it's no longer turned on. So, yeah, this is not a good, good test. Um, I do not like that it lost lots of its configuration. I'll try and look a little bit into that, but at least it came back. You know, the the, the node is back and it's running again, but uh, clearly it's it's lost some of its configuration, which is a little bit disheartening. So that was after 25 hours of no power, and it recovered. Um, it did, uh, uh, um, you know. So not not super great there, but. Um, I wanted to make note that, um, you know, I also upgraded the, uh, the Meshtastic version on this node. We can see here I'm using MeshSense, but um, we can see that um, on uh, version 2.5, the Meshtastic node, this 0274, showed no voltage and it always showed charge. It had no reading over there. And that's really the reason why I added the INA219 so that I could measure the voltage. But the moment I upgraded to Mestastic 2.6, what do you know, it suddenly started working. And it started giving me a voltage, and it started giving me a, 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 a percentage charge. So there's definitely something they fixed in 2.6 with these seed WIO nodes. It now properly registers the voltage and the, and the percentage charge. So that was really, really great to see that. Okay, so um, then uh, just a timeline and a battery drain. I was on Mestastic 2.5. You can see when it came back the next morning, the data was corrupted. Not all the data, just some of the data. Um, I, could, I could easily fix that. Uh, then I upgraded to Mestastic 2.6 and the voltage started to show. Then I went in last night, I went in at about 80% charge and this morning, no node found. It was dead. So I had to open the case and press the reset button. That was the only way to recover this morning. So um, I don't know whether the Mestastic version made a difference or whether what went wrong. But, I, you know, it's only been two or three days. So I will continue to test this setup to see if this is something, you know, was just a fluke or, or what caused it to... Um, 
just died. It did not recover. So after last night, somewhere during the night, it ran out of voltage. It died. Uh, you know, this morning I opened, I, I looked for it. It's not there. I opened the case. The battery is charged almost to four volts already with the sun shining on the solar panel, but the node never came back. So the only way to get the node back this morning was to press the reset button, but no data was lost. It came back and everything looks good. No corrupted data. It looked good. So that's what I did there. And uh, so, you know, my final verdict on this, using this S3 is, uh -huh, I, I don't know about that. I don't know if it's such a good thing yet. Um, you know, what I can do to make this better, I can put a bigger solar panel on because it's just, uh, you know, USB. I can just, I have a bigger one and that will charge the batteries uh, quicker. I can put two 18650 batteries actually in that case. And then, which case, you know, it would last, you know, 50 hours, and that, that would solve the problem. Um, you know, bigger solar panel and more batteries, just connect them in, uh, uh, in there, and, and that would work. Um, but, you know, ideally, an ESP32 S3 should not be used for solar applications. But, hey, if you're willing to try it, you know, go for it. I'll continue to play with this one and see where it ends up. Um, Next, I'll be building uh, of the same exact same node, but this time with a uh, T114, a Haltech T114, which is a NRF52 based, and we'll compare the voltage draw from that one to this guy. So look out for that video in the next week or so. So um, you know, um, thanks for watching, and um, so that's my verdict on on using this uh, ESP32 S3. Um, and I'll post some updates if I, if I learn more in the future. So uh, thank you very much.